This episode is brought to you by Paramount Plus. Get in, loser! Mean Girls is now streaming on Paramount Plus. Join Katie Heron as she meets the plastics and Tina Fey's new twist on the modern classic. Get ready for more of the rumors, backstabbing, and jokes you loved from the original movie with some fetch surprises. Rated PG 13. Wear pink and head to ParamountPlus.com to try it free. Survivor 46 is here and so is On Fire, the only official Survivor podcast, and we have a twist this season. The winner of Survivor 45, D. Vyadaris, will be joining us every week. We're going behind the scenes of the biggest moments, the how and the why things happen, and the strategy and analysis you can only get from someone like me, a Survivor winner. Listen to On Fire, the official Survivor podcast, wherever you get your podcast. Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Collin II, and with me, as always, is... Sesame Refrigerator Allen and Carta. Refrigerator Allen. Mm-hmm. Didn't he play for the Chicago Bears back in the 80s? Oh wait, no, that was Refrigerator Perry. I'm that sorry. was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I got a question for you. Sure, what's did up? you Did you ever learn CPR when you were a kid? Um, I tried to but i think i failed the thing because it was in health class when i was like a freshman in high school and uh i think it was mainly just from nerves and anxiety i yeah. think i think like if i actually had to perform it on someone now i'd probably be able to do it so i think yeah the real reason why i failed is just because i was like so nervous about other people watching me and all that kind of i ha- i took a babysitting course and to get certified as a babysitter when I was a kid. Okay. It was me and my friend Dan were the only guys in the class. Okay. So it was kind of weird, but you know, I was like probably in like sixth or seventh grade. Yeah. And, uh, I was, uh, doing it because I was watching my sister after school a lot. Cause back in the day they thought it was cool to, you know, let a 12 year old watch their, uh, eight year old exactly. sister. Exactly. <laughs> Times have changed so much since then <laughs> about letting kids just stay at home at like the age of 12 or 13 or whatever. Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. I still remember it, it was crazy. A lot of the things that happened when we did that, like my sister forgot her key one day and ended up trying to break into the house and, um, oh God. and, and cut her hand on the window because she oh broke no. her window oh to get God. Cause I wasn't there right away or something. And oh I, no. Yeah. A crazy stuff like that, but but anyways, in that class we did have we did have a CPR. We we they brought in resuscitation Annie and we uh, or as they call it in the show that we're covering, recessa Annie. Um, yeah, uh, and we learned how to do CPR, and I was certified and everything. So yeah, I honestly don't think I've ever used it or ever will. Luckily, um, hopefully, <laughs> but yeah. So today on the show, because the reason I bring that up. It's not just because I'm a big fan of CPR. Um, <laughs> I have I have a CPR, uh, you know, uh, instruction map on my wall right now, and uh, okay, yeah, and then uh, I've I've got like five resuscitation Annie dolls just hanging on the walls too. It's not creepy at all. It actually sounds really creepy. Yeah. <laughs> I like sitting there imagining what this would look like. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> I've got a couple with their heads off that I've just got like mounted to the oh, wall. No. M- mounted the, mounted to the wall like they're you know moose or a deer like or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a, if you have to practice the breathing portion, you don't don't have to worry about constantly having the body. You, you can just go up to the wall. <laughs> it's terrible. No, it's, oh, no. I'm not creepy. No, anyways. Um, <laughs> today on the show we are covering another very special episode of an '80s sitcom. This time it is the. Second season, episode 16 of Punky Brewster, entitled Cherry Lifesaver. Cherry Lifesaver, yeah. 
to get it yeah. because of the 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 fruit, the lifesaver. Mm-hmm. But because you know they were shaped like an actual lifesaver is like in the water. Yes, because the best her time name is Sherry. The best times yeah. to make a pun is when you're teaching kids how to save lives. Yeah, and we'll we'll see more of that too because don't encourage that because there's one person in particular that really loves jokes even oh, if yeah. they're not funny. And uh, so don't don't add you know to the fire there. And so uh, people that you know may not know is that uh, Punky Brewster was a show on NBC that ran um, from 1984 until 1988. It originally was on after two years. It was on NBC for two years, and then uh, in 87 to 88, it ran in syndication, which people may not know syndication is where it uh where a show will be sold to local channels like usually back in the day it was like fox channels on the weekends and stuff so Mm -hmm. and they would air the show usually like in the afternoon with like charles in charge and baywatch and stuff like that (laughs) um so yeah the, the show is basically about a uh a girl whose mom is a piece of shit that leaves her in a grocery store and um she she's basically living on the streets with her dog Brandon and uh she discovers a vacant apartment in a local building and uh the building is managed by this guy Henry Warnamont and he he's like an elderly widowed guy photographer who uh is like a grouch but he but Punky warms his heart and he takes her in and adopts her and you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and so th- this was the time time when television shows were all about you know kids not living in normal families which i mean it's yeah, fine it's like, you know it's like you, you you had things like webster and different strokes and stuff all at this time you know where people are just living you know th- this one they didn't go for the uh interracial family thing but um yeah well, so also mr belvedere that's another one uh, well, no no mr belvedere was a he, they, the family was there it was just he he was just a, a nanny oh okay yeah he, the the you know they they had their parents you know so yeah but uh yeah this uh this episode is a very famous episode of the show mm-hmm. um the show stars George Gaines as Henry Wanamont Soleil Moon Fry as Penelope Punky Brewster Susie Garrett as Mrs Johnson Sherry Johnson as Sherry Johnson <laughs> yes they used her name T K Carter who you may know from Good morning, Miss Bliss, as Mike Fulton, their teacher. You have uh, oh, yeah. uh, Casey Ellison as Alan Anderson, uh, Amy Foster as Margot Kramer. In this mm. particular episode, you have the guest star Frank Bonner as Chester, a uh, appliance salesman, and Elvin as a person at the appliance store. Um, I, oh, James Hampton as Elvin, I'm sorry. And then you also yeah. have Sandy as Brandon, the dog. Um, well, of course, if you got you got to name the dog. Yes. Uh, so, what were your initial thoughts of this uh, episode here? Uh, very interesting. Um, sort of like nostalgia, but it was a little bit before my time because I was only like three when this episode came out. Yeah. So, I didn't really watch Punky. In fact, this is a weird story. Uh. <clears throat> I thought that Punky Brewster was a show about like a like teenagers like in high school oh. and and until like when I was like nineteen or something like that because I was um like I was just like trying to impress people by like watching old shows and I was like oh yeah I was a big fan of Punky Brewster or whatever and then like I had no idea what the show was about <laughs> and I just thought it would be like a weird obscure thing to tell people like like to just sort of like build up my weird fred of being like a weird person or whatever yeah and like yeah i, I was like had no idea what it was about and uh and so much so that i wrote a song and it had nothing to do with the show whatsoever and it was just like people were just like what are you talking it's got nothing to do with <laughs> that's just made up like like the, the the theme of the show had nothing to do with the actual theme it was just like a made up imagination in my mind what i thought punky brewster was i just imagined it was like a saved by the bell type of show you know and, yeah yeah well i mean uh, Soleil Moon Fry was good friends with Mark Paul Gosler, and she did guest star on uh, Save well, there by you the go. Bell. So yeah, there's a connection there. Yeah, there you yeah. go. But that was when she was a teenager. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. The, the uh, yeah, I, I used to watch the show when I was a kid. Um, I 
clearly remember watching this episode. I'm about the same age as Punky, so it's, you know, she's she's a little older than me, but not much. Um, I remember when you're a little kid, you have a crush on the cute girl on TV, and she was the cute girl on TV. <laughs> Oh, okay. So, you know, it was like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, there, there was also the, uh, there's a, there was a spinoff called, um, cartoon show in titled It's Punky Brewster, which was about, um, it was about, uh, Punky who also, also, uh, had, um, had a friend who was a leprechaun gopher. So yes, he was a gopher who was hey. also a leprechaun. And his name okay. and his name and his name was Glomer. Okay, that's bizarre, and, but all right. And I used to do an impersonation of him that made made the cute girl that lived near my uh, grandparents uh, laugh every time I did it. So when but I was kept little doing kid, it all the time, yeah, you know? yeah, it was because yeah. basically, you know, the the way the Glomer would say is like, "Hello, Punky friend." Oh my god, that's how he sounded. Hilarious. Hello, Punky friend. Um, yeah, he was, and, and he was voiced by Frank Welker, the uh, oh, the the voice of Fred on Scooby Doo, and the current okay. voice of Scooby Doo, as well as the original voice of Megatron, and uh, and the voice of like everything in our childhood. Um, Megatron, yes, awesome, <laughs> cool. What about he sounds familiar too to the oh the dude from He Man, the is that the same guy? No, I don't think oh. Frank Welker was involved with He Man. But, so it's not Orko. It's not the same voice as Orko. No, Orko was vo- voiced by the creator of He Man, um, of oh. the, the animated show. That one of the producers of the show. They he he just basically took his reg- regular voice and they sped it up in a in an audio process. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah so yeah, eventually I would like to cover an episode of It's Punky Brewster, but we'll get to that eventually. So, <laughs> what happens in this episode here, Sesame? Oh boy. Uh, so the, um, Henry's refrigerator's screwing up real bad, and, uh, yeah. he doesn't want to get rid of it because he bought it a long time ago, but eventually it just goes, boom, black smoke comes up, rattles a whole bunch, gotta go buy a new fridge, the way it is, you know? So, I, so I, as I have here in my notes is that the refrigerator both overfreezes and catches on fire. Yeah, yeah, exactly, so, so, yeah. As as Katy Perry would tell the fridge, you're hot and you're cold. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And you're yes and you're no and you and then you're uh <laughs> and you're up and you're down. <clears throat> yeah. And so he's gotta go buy a new fridge. Funky, you know, pets her dog, Brandon. Not not Joe Biden, but Brandon, and then um <laughs> and then she <laughs> I wonder if this brand, I wonder if this Brandon would have been a better uh <laughs> been taking care better care of the middle east right now and uh you know, foreign relations and stuff but anyways, maybe it's so, yeah. possible i don't know so she says goodbye to brandon i think she kissed his head which is a kind of reverse a little bit but like and then so then she uh she goes off to school <clears throat> excuse me and then um they have cpr lessons by um a teacher named mike who they all address as mike and had, had some feelings about that that's um Put those aside for a little bit, but uh, okay. And then you got here. Well, it's just like I, I, I understand like the cool teacher thing. Call yeah. you by your first thing. But I don't know. Sometimes, yeah, I think it's a, it's a little bit too much. Yeah, especially when you're little kids. That's not like when you're in high school and college. Maybe that's a little bit different. But like when you got little kids, that that's that's the age where you kind of need to have like authority figures, like that, like your friend or whatever. But that's again, that's. I mean, whole, I, I, I guess it depends. Like my my dad, um, his whole life never called his parents mom and dad. Oh, okay. He he always referred to them and as Emmett and Nellie. So okay, well, and they were I don't know. they were they were completely fine with it. So who knows? Okay, well, I, you know, to each their own, I guess. You know, I guess it happens. But um, and uh, and so he got this um piece of shit student named Alan, who's the class clown. And he tells the most stupid jokes possible that everyone think, seems to think are the funniest thing they've ever heard. Granted, they're like all seven to eight years old, so I guess at that point in life, maybe it was the funniest thing they've ever heard, you know? It's like trying chicken nuggets for the first time. You think it's the greatest thing ever, you know? But I remember being alive in the 80s and having a better sense of humor than these kids. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Alan is lucky in the sense that he has a 
a, an audience that's easily entertained, you know, like, you know, like a monkey with a banana or some shit like that. I don't know. But like, and they're all laughing, thinking it's the greatest thing ever. And then uh, Mike, the teacher, um, he's trying to teach them CPR and Alan keeps derailing very, very important lesson that's a literal lifesaver. And so eventually he gives him about three or four chances to shut the fuck up. He doesn't do so. So Mike sends him to the principal's office. Yeah, I was really regarding... surprised when on NBC they just had him say, shut the fuck up, Alan. Yeah, oh, wait, he's like, shut the fuck up, Alan. Go no. to the principal's office now. <laughs> and he starts complaining about, oh, well, they're going to make me do eraser duty forever. So then he gives him an eraser. He's like, okay, then get to it. And then he No, 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 he, gi- he, he gives him the eraser and he says, he says, why don't you take this and beat it? Oh, it's right. Yeah, yeah. Which was funnier he than did. anything Alan said. So. <laughs> Because it was, it was because the way beat the eraser. Yeah, Mike is a comedian on. on it's like a side gig after. Yeah, after school. and so he um, teaches. Um, he he has um, uh, Punky and Margot uh, basically act as like a, like a team to to do the resuscitate this uh, Annie this this um, manic not mannequin but uh, whatever you call it um, doll a dummy your doll yeah and yeah. um. It's got like a machine kind of hooked up to um, its body to like let you know if you're doing it correctly or whatever. I'm not sure how it registers that, but it does. I think and it then, like registers um, your breath and the, the yeah the movement of your and, uh, yeah heart thing, I guess. Mm-hmm. And so they they passed it. Um, Funky did the the breath work, and then Margaret was doing the heart pumping. Yeah, and so yay, you know, <clears throat> it turns out that you you can have fun. And learn things at the same time. Alan, of course, does not understand this nuance. But we do and learn I, that CPR is not fun. Well, I mean, it's, I mean, yeah, it's obvious because you're doing it in a life saving situation. Yes. <laughs> so I would imagine it wouldn't be fun unless you're like the weirdest person ever who's like, this is, unless you're like Cordy, you know, from the, 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 um, the Stranger Danger slash, you know, face your yeah. fear slash where, Corny is entertained by everything. He thinks flossing his teeth is fun and makes yeah. random screams and shout, shouts in the middle of the classroom. I mean, the dental that, floss. So, you know, I guess. Yeah, I don't think there's people. too many people out there that are just going around being like, I wonder if I can perform CPR today. That'll exactly. Be the greatest like, day ever. <laughs> it's like, yes, you know, yeah. bonus points if they survive, you know, type of thing or whatever. <laughs> it's just like, okay, whoa, dude. And so, um, Predictably, we're going to find out that this um, CPR is going to be needed in Later. the episode at yeah. some point. Yes. And they're doing, um, I'll stop in a minute, but I yeah. just want to make one point I think is is relevant to this, the, this entire episode. Mm-hmm. And I think that pretty much everything could have been avoided if this thing happened. So um, they're playing hide and seek outside the, the apartment complex. And Sherry can't find a place so she hides in the old refrigerator do you have dreams that you want to achieve but are scared to do so due to self-doubt fear and other people's criticism i have just what you need you need a dose of the living the dream with curveball podcast where i interview guests that will motivate and inspire you to stop at nothing to achieve your dreams. And always remember, if you believe, you can achieve. The Living the Dream the Curveball podcast is available on your favorite podcast app. Hey everybody, why don't you give the old Black Lincoln Collective podcast a listen? We're funny, we're fat, and we're here 24-7 at blcpodcast.com. Anytime you want to listen, anywhere, all your favorite podcast apps. Of course, we have a YouTube channel where you can stream live with the show. Check out our shorts. We're funnier the less you hear of us. That's been a Black Lincoln Collective podcast at blcpodcast.com. Oh, that's the other thing. So Henry pretty much gets swindled at the the client store. Um, He's he's, he's being sold, sold a new fridge by by uh herb from wkrp and yes uh, <laughs> and uh and then there's like some yokel sounding partner who comes up and he's got money and he's just like he, he he's offering to buy the 
the appliance, the, the fridge right away. And he's just like, you know, I've got the money right here. And then he says, this is the last one. And so Henry buys it because he was there first, which is a complete, you know, I'm sure he has like 20 or so in the back room, but yeah. It's a, it's a basic confidence scam. Like one of the, one of the easiest ones to do. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's like when you got the people at the, the county, I mean, at like the fair where you do the thing to win the big stuffed animal and then you show a guy who's just like walking behind holding this yeah. huge stuffed animal to make it look like, oh, this person won won the huge bear, even though he's working directly with the carny dude who's doing the, the, the plus, you know, event or whatever. Plus it's the manufactured, manufactured uh, supply and demand, um, you know, scheme too, like where, you know, it's it's basically you know saying that you know it's not um we, that we were, were scarcity sort of thing a scarcity model where you got basically yeah, yeah only it's only, only one them. left yeah yeah so he gets swindled you would know the refrigerator is pretty nice that he bought so oh yeah you know whatever it's, it's a nice fridge and you know nice nice square ice cubes you know really really cool and uh <clears throat> so uh sherry goes into the, the fridge and what I don't understand about this, okay, so, you know, eventually Alan doesn't catch anyone because, again, in addition to being a piece of shit and it's not funny, he's also terrible at, at hide and seek, right? So, mm-hmm. and they're done with the game. They talk for a good two minutes, it seems like. Sherry doesn't say a word the entire time. She knows the game is over because they're talking about it. And then they all go inside. And as soon as everyone leaves, that's when she starts asking for help. Well, maybe she so, couldn't hear not... that. Maybe she couldn't hear inside. I don't know. But you would, but you, but you would assume since we could hear her from the outside too. But that's what I said. You the... could hear her from the outside, and I mean, I, I doubt that contraption like that would be so soundproof that yeah. being two feet away from it, or even like a few inches away from it, well, you wouldn't I... be able to. Well, why don't we take a break? I'm just joking. Um, and, and you can go and get in your refrigerator and tell me. Yeah. Tell, tell me if your parents can hear you on the outside of it or something. Well, I was. The thing is, too, is that they were. It, it was. I don't know. But it just it just seemed like it was convenient for the episode to do. Well, yeah. Like, and, you know, because and, like, and it was also convenient that that it started snowing. So Henry says, oh, I'll take the door off of the refrigerator later. Like the snow exactly. is going to somehow stop you from doing that. No, he just didn't want to be out in the cold is what it was. Yeah, and then he's just still. like, oh, who cares and whatever. <laughs> so the second everyone leaves, that's when she decides to finally talk because whatever. And then uh, obviously no one can hear her because, you know, everyone's inside drinking hot cocoa and whatnot or whatever. And then um, and then what else happens? What, what happens after that? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to now pass the, the baton to you. Okay, so basically, <laughs> okay, so Punky and... Uh... Margot tell Henry and Betty that um, that's Mrs. Mrs. Johnson, Betty, that's uh, Sherry's grandmother, um, to help them look for Sherry, um, who hasn't um, been found in the hide and seek game. And and okay, here here here's a, a note that I have in my notes for this. This, my friends, is why kids should never play games. <laughs> Ever. I think, I think kids should games. just be obedient and sit inside. And yeah. do nothing. Yep. Don't want to play a game. No, nope. because you know you could play a you could play a video game, but you're probably going to get abducted by somebody on the internet. And if you <laughs> nah. just be an adult and be an adult as yeah. you're a kid, it reminds me. You should just of this, sit um, around in your in in your kitchen and drink coffee all day. That's all you that's should it. do. Yep. Drink coffee at the age of seven or eight. Yes, yes that's that's the lesson we're teaching right now. No, it reminds me of this um, video game website I play that has a bunch of old classic games Mm -hmm. and it's um it's like a the website's like in the czech republic so i probably have like a million viruses playing it but like anyway and um it's got a quote and it's got like a wizard looking dude next to the quote and it says something like um people don't we don't um how is it uh we don't um shoot what was it like we don't get old because we stop playing I don't know. I was fucking up the quote. Whatever. Basically saying like we get old because we stop playing games, essentially, or something like yeah. that. I don't know. I was sense. fucking up the quote. So, like I don't know. I've read the quote like a million times, so I can't remember it now. But you know, it's okay. But I guess you are getting old because you can't remember it. <laughs> I can't remember the exact quote exactly. I've, I've read this. I go on this website like five times a week, I think, or something like that to play Red Racer, which is a great game. I love Red yeah. Racer. 
and try to play Karate Kid on NES can never fucking beat that game. Beat shit. Here's what happens next. Uh, Henry and Alan are shocked to find that Sherry is trapped inside of the old refrigerator. They they hear her and um, so they let her out and and uh, Henry's like, you know, you learned uh, CPR in class, Alan. Help save her. Right, exactly. And and Alan didn't know how to do it because he, you know, Mike sent him out of the class because he was being a dumbass. And so they, they, they send him to go call the paramedics. Hopefully he knows how to use a phone. He went to go get Betty as well. And and while uh, Punky and, and then Punky and Margo come out and they administer CPR to Sherry, which is lucky that they just learned it this week in school, you know, because, yeah, exactly. you know, it, it, it's it's it, it's always great when something you learn in school comes in handy like that week. I mean, I remember when I learned about the War of 1812 and then the next day I had to fight in a war. Oh, wait, no. He had to fight the British, like, the next yes, day. Yes, it, yeah. it, was, it was insane. And I was like, is this the War of 1812? And somebody's like, no, man, it's 1993. And I'm like, oh, shit. But we have the muskets and everything, though, yeah. so. Mm-hmm. And and I didn't know how to use it because I didn't pay attention in class. Exactly. They taught you how to shoot a musket <laughs> in class. <laughs> What kind of school was this? Didn't they teach you that in your school? <laughs> no, they they're like here's here's how the bayonet goes in. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna do a, a demonstration on Rasusa Annie here. I mean, just each war, each, each, war, each war we talked about, we learned how to use more updated weapons from each one. You know, <laughs> yeah, we started okay. out using bows so, and arrows in class, and then you know, I lost a lot of good classmates that way. <laughs> Like, All right, we're gonna teach about the the Russian Revolution now. So, like, there's a guy named Kalishnikov <laughs> who, who invented the AK-47. Yes, and, uh, and... And we're talking about Molotov. So, be really careful with this one, okay? And that's how Bob died in my class. Oh wait, anyway, so yeah, um... it's not bad. <laughs> yeah, so they so, so they 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 manage they they managed to successfully revive uh, Sherry, and Alan is like devastated that he was unable to help and he's like you know saying oh, she could have died because of me and, blah, blah, blah. and he's like me i'm making it all about himself you yeah feel it, sorry it, he, he's you overreacting know, in my opinion but i mean i guess it, no he's it, also a sociopath and, yeah. and like in a, and a narcissist in addition to being the class clown which tracks i guess because of wanting the attention and stuff like that would go hand in hand with being a narcissist so and yeah. he grew up to be Donald Trump. It's really weird. But um, <laughs> so, so they, they revive her. Um, and like I said, Alan is a bit dramatic, but he, he does, and, you know, it does teach kids that are watching the lessons that they should listen to their teachers, even if they are insisting you call them by their first names. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so Henry tells, you know, Alan not to blame himself and suggests the two of them learn CPR together. Which you know, I want to see that class. Yeah, that would be a good. That would be a good like buddy cop, not not cop, but like a buddy <laughs> film of like yes. both of them just failing like over and over. They got to take the test like eighteen times before the name, they the name, the name of the it. movie is Henry and Alan learn CPR. Yeah. yeah, yes. And there's just like a huge string of bodies that have died because they failed so many times. <laughs> like, like they've had so many opportunities to save someone's life, they just can't do it. Just, just it's, randomly it's, everywhere they go, somebody's dying, and they could have saved their lives, and they can't. Exactly, but they they can't. It took them so it took them so many times to to finally um, pass pass the test. So good job. Having uh, you know, they basically, you know, they've kind of learned it by watching the girls and uh, just save save Sherry's life. Um. Henry also explained that um, that he should have taken the fridge door off in the beginning before this tragedy happened. You yeah, know. exactly. Yeah, so it's all it's all Henry's fault, and <laughs> it is. Plus, too, though, you could probably still open a fridge without the handle. I mean, I've done that. Well, where sometimes it was an older, older, off. older fridge. At that time, they actually had a mechanism where they would lock, and you couldn't get out from the inside. Okay. Sometimes, you know, that's something they updated. Um, I don't know, you know, how old Henry's fridge was, but it might have been something like that. But I mean, then again, I I did see Indiana Jones hiding her fridge to save himself from a nuclear blast, and um, exactly. So. Yeah, so I, I I I don't believe either one of those things are true. You don't need bomb shelters. You can just use a refrigerator. It's fine. Yes. Yep. Yeah. People are gonna come home one day, and you're gonna be in your fridge, Matt. And people are like, "Why?" And it's like, "Oh, I heard that they're gonna attack us soon, and I just needed to save myself." Yeah. They're not. They're, you know, they're trying to figure out if 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 she's okay while the paramedics are on the way. And Sherry says that she's feeling hungry, so Punky thinks she's gonna be just fine. Yay! Because she's hungry. Our, our credits and okay, my. My last lesson here, I really hope that kids who see this actually go and take CPR lessons and don't think that they can go off and save people just by watching a TV show. Yeah, so yeah, I, exactly. I mean, I think there's more to it. And I mean, I, it does give the basics pretty well and everything, but I don't 
know if it's enough to make you completely confident to save somebody's lives. But it's probably yeah. enough to actually do it, I guess, you know, so who knows? I don't just, know. Um, I tell you just, what I tell you what, next time we're together, I'm gonna choke. Don't. And then you're gonna save my life, okay? And then we'll let the kids know if Punky Brewster really taught us how. Do the high, well, that's a Heimlich maneuver. It's different. But well, um, I, I'm I'm gonna choke to the point where my heart stops beating. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, or better yet, we'll get a, we'll get an old refrigerator, and I'll get inside of it. Yeah. I'll I'll stay in there for you know I don't know how long Sherry was in there. It seems like probably about twenty minutes or longer. Um, and then you pull me out of there. I mean, if I die, it's all for the good of the podcast. Yeah, it is. So, so, you know, that's why I'm never going to get together with you again. Sure. Because I'm going to be afraid that I'm going to have to end up in a fridge. Okay. So you don't have to do that. It's not like that's a requirement, but, but I, I need to do research for the podcast. Yeah. Let's do that thing where it's like, if you, um, if you subscribe to our Patreon, one of us will go in <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and see how long we can stay in there before passing out. Uh, I, I, I don't know much about the law, but yeah. I think there's something that would say that, you know, possibly endangering the lives of one of our yeah. co-hosts um, is not something that Patreon would allow us to put up as a uh, as, as a No, perk. we'd have to, we'd have to like, sign up for, like, another one, like, Ko-Fi or Locals or some bullshit or whatever, you know? Yeah. Uh, which are like basically hand me down to Patreon. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. I, I still think it would probably be, be some kind of wire fraud or something. I don't know. I'm just making stuff yeah. up. So, so final, final, uh, question here for you. Do you think that this, uh, episode, uh, made its point? Yeah, I think reasonably well. It was, I mean, it was pretty straightforward. There wasn't too much goofing around besides Alan, but I just mean in general, yeah. it wasn't, wasn't really a distraction uh, or distracting from the main point. Um, sometimes shows could kind of get a little too far ahead and trying to entertain people and kind of forget, you know, burying the lead yeah, a little bit. Of, like, it, what you can't take away. Is. You can't take away the, all the humor from a sitcom. I mean, you know, you, yeah. even in the the other ones that we watched, the other very special episodes, the Family Ties and Boy Meets World, they still had humor in them. Yeah, I don't know. I, I enjoyed it. I thought it, it, you know, and it it probably has taught people how to save lives i don't know if you know cpr is still the same i'm assuming it hasn't been updated too much no i i, I think it's like a little bit faster the heart the heart thing pumping because uh -huh. um i saw a thing recently on the news when they were talking about it and they said to to um kind of interesting to do it to the beat of staying alive by the bg it's just funny because you're literally trying to well, they they had that yeah. in that office episode. They did that too. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's an there's and, an episode uh, of the office. It's the same one where uh, Dwight cuts off the face of the resuscitation Annie doll and then puts it on his face like he's Hannibal Lecter or something. Whoa! <laughs> so yeah. Wow. Wait, the the woman teaching them CPR tells them to do it to the beat of uh, staying alive. Yeah, and and um, Margot was going a little bit slower than that, so that's maybe that's like. That part's been updated, but I think everything else probably is the same. Yeah, but yeah, hopefully um, nobody will ever have to use CPR that's listening to this, but I guess this is a good, you know, good lesson that you should pay attention if you ever do have a CPR class, whether you're a little shit like Alan or you're an adult, <laughs> you know, so yeah. Yeah, and also too, so this episode was, it was like a twofer though too, because it also talked about not getting inside refrigerators as well. So, yes. or going and trapping yourself into objects yeah when you when you're playing hide and seek you should never hide that's what i've learned well no you should hide just oh. hide somewhere stuck <laughs> like oh uh, okay refrigerator for example i think gi joe did the same thing with the refrigerator thing. did they um i'm sure one of like their like one of their their um end portions where they do like a life lesson or whatever oh yeah they probably did the yeah yeah learning's half the battle gi joe but uh yeah it's all right i mean you know it's it's probably not a show i'll rewatch or anything like that yeah. you know just because it's like dated quote unquote kids show and it's yeah not, but it's not a kids show that i myself grew up watching so it's not like it, it's not like for example like i'd rewatch you know boy meets world a little bit even then i didn't really watch it religiously but i watched yeah. it enough to like remember like oh that was kind of cool when i was watching that show back when it came out or whatever like Saved by the Bell, for example. Yeah, I mean, they tried to, you know, speaking of Saved by the Bell, um, Peacock um, had a reboot of that that didn't really last that long. It lasted yeah. two years. But they also had a Punky Brewster reboot. That that was lasted only one season. It was kind of interesting. I mean, it was, it was decent. It was about 
punky raising some kids and then this girl comes in that's kind of like a you know punky 2.0 who uh she exactly is, like takes in as a foster kid yeah it was get, get yeah. it yeah I, I actually liked it it was decent but it you know mo- most things nowadays like the problem i think with streamers is that they never give shows a chance television in general never gives shows a chance anymore no like, it doesn't there's a lot of shows that never would have made it if today's standards were held to it like Seinfeld or other shows that lasted a long time that were horrible ratings wise in their first season and nowadays you know a show has one bad week and it's like okay bye bye any final thoughts here before we wrap things up nope just be careful don't let your kids hide inside refrigerators learn CPR teach your children named Alan to not always be a class clown all the time and take things seriously if you're a teacher Don't let your students call you by your first name all the time. (laughs) Uh, Folks, if you enjoyed this episode, um, be sure to check out all2real2.com. Check out our T Public, our Patreon, all of our social media. You can find this show anywhere you find shows. Be sure to subscribe, share the show, Uh and um, give us a five-star rating anywhere you can, like Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever they allow ratings of any kind, you know. Just, you know, give us a five star review on the street. Just walk up to random people and be like, "All too real, too" deserves a five star rating. Yeah, and then they can look at you weird. Sure. And yeah. They, you know, and you know, you know, don't don't go into a refrigerator to give us a review because that'd be weird. Um, yeah, yeah, because I don't know why you would. Basically, that's about it. And remember, folks, that I love you. Alan's a little shit. <laughs> don't get in a refrigerator ever, regardless of your age. Yeah. Sesame loves you. And until next time, folks. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at cullenpark.com.